Yeah. On this vote, the yeas are 420, the nays are nine, with two recorded as present, two thirds being in the affirmative. The rules are suspended, the bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Pursuant to Clause 1C of Rule 19, further consideration of H.R. 4350 will now resume. The clerk will report the title. According to a report by Reuters earlier today, the U.S. House of Representatives voted overwhelmingly on Thursday to give $1 billion in aid to Israel for its Iron Dome missile defense system. Two days after objections from the most liberal Democrats forced leaders to remove it from a broader spending bill. The measure passed by 420 yeas to nine nays, with two members voting present, one of them being Alexander Cortez. That sent the measure to the Senate, where leaders have not yet scheduled a vote. A handful of progressive House Democrats who accused Israel of human rights abuses against Palestinians had objected to the provisions included in the broad spending bill. That threatened the bill's passage, with Democrats only narrowly controlling the House because Republicans opposed a plan to fund the federal government through December 3rd and raise the nation's borrowing limit. The House passed the broader bill on Tuesday, but the removal of the Iron Dome funding angered centrist Democrats and led Republicans to label the party as anti-Israel, despite a long tradition in the U.S. Congress of strong support from both parties for the Jewish state. The House Democrats leader immediately said they would introduce a standalone bill to provide the Iron Dome funding. Israeli Prime Minister Natali Bennett thanked both parties in the House for their support and also stated that those who tried to challenge this support got a resounding response today. The Liberal Democrats have criticized U.S.-Israeli policy, saying there should be more concern for human rights issues like Palestinian civilian casualties and Israel struck back after Hamas rockets attacks in May. We should also be talking about the Palestinian need for protection against Israeli attacks, said Democratic Representative Rashida Tlaib, an opponent of the funding, said during debate. The $1 billion in the Iron Dome funding bill is intended to replace missile interceptors Israeli used to ward off rockets fired from Gaza during the May conflict. This comes at the heel on Tuesday, according to Newsweek. United States Israel walk out of the United Nations meeting after Zionism likened to racism. After a draft resolution was introduced at the United Nations General Assembly that likened Zionism racism, the U.S. and Israel walked out of the annual meeting the Associated Press purported on Tuesday. The provision which also singled out Israel for criticism was eventually discarded. Zionism is the Jewish national movement of self-determination in the land of Israel, the historical birthplace and biblical homeland of the Jewish people, according to the Anti-Defamation League. The assembly was scheduled on Wednesday to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the UN World Conference Against Racism in Durban, South Africa, a controversial gathering that saw disputes over the Middle East and slavery's legacy, AP reported. 20 countries made the decision to boycott the commemoration, according to the Conference of Presidents of major American Jewish organizations. The organization called on additional countries to join their efforts in continuing to fight racism, bigotry, and anti-Semitism. Many people became openly critical of Israeli policies. Earlier on today, according to Al Monitor, Israel criticized Iran's president on Wednesday following the new leader's fiery speech at the United Nations General Assembly. In a tweet, the Israeli foreign minister praised trucks in uh, New York City displaying messages critical of Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi. Inside the UN building, Iran's president continues to lie to the world, which were the signs on these trucks. Several trucks were driving around New York City this week to protest Raisi and the Islamic Republic of Iran. Some featured pictures of Raisi painting him as a human rights abuser according to images from the opposition American, Iranian Americans for Liberty Group. Raisi has long faced criticism for his human rights record, including his role in the mass killing of Iranian protesters in 1988. 
It is not surprising Israel celebrated the anti-Raisi protest in New York as Raisi slammed Israel during a speech on Tuesday, not to mention the wider conflict between Israel and Iran. He went on to say earlier on that the occupier Zionist regime is the organizer of the biggest state terrorism whose agenda is to slaughter women and children in Gaza and the West Bank, Raisi said in his address, which was delivered via video message from Tehran. Raisi also criticized U.S. sanctions on Iran and mentioned the January 6th storming of the U.S. Capitol and the August withdrawal of U.S. forces from Iran's neighbor, Afghanistan. Raisi would go on to say, from the capital to Kabul, one clear message was sent to the world. The United States hegemonic system has no credibility. The list of Middle Eastern leaders set to address the assembly on Wednesday included King Salman, Saudi Arabia, Iraqi President Bahan Sahali, and Lebanese President Michael Aoun, among others. With that in mind, why is it that the United States and Israel are so joined at the hip? Is it because of the strong presence of the Israeli influence in our American government? in both the House and the Senate, in both the Republican and Democratic parties. But what does that say about American democracy? Can it be bought at the highest bidder? One can make the argument that it can, according to Israeli and Gulf lobbyists, who both have a primary and resounding presence in persuading the Democratic and Republican Party to pass legislature in their favor. For example, the recent passing of $1 billion to a foreign country's defense. Now, for those who approve or saying Israel is a key ally in the region in fighting the war on terrorism. The nays would also have a sound argument against, suggesting that Israel itself has committed human rights abuses against Semitic peoples within their own country, and that they are a reason for terrorism in the region and elsewhere. To show you how vast the power is of Israel in our American politics, I go back to a report by the Electronic Intifada on March 5th, 2018, entitled, What's in Al Jazeera's Undercover Film on the U.S.-Israel Lobby. The leading neoconservative think tank Foundation for Defense of Democracies is functioning as an agent of the Israeli government, Al Jazeera's forthcoming investigation on the U.S.-Israeli lobby had revealed. According to a source who has seen the undercover documentary, which is now public, It contains footage of a powerful Israeli official claiming that, quote, we have FDD. We have others working on this, end quote. Seema Vakengil, a former Israeli military intelligence officer, is said to state that the foundation is working on projects for Israel, including data gathering, information analysis, working on activist organizations, money trail. This is something that only a country with its resources can do the best. Under the Foreign Agents Registration Act, commonly known as FARA, U.S. organizations and individuals who work on behalf of foreign governments are required to register with the counterintelligence section of the Department of Justice. A search on the FARA website shows that the Foundation for Defense of Democracies is not registered. Al Jazeera's film reportedly identifies a number of lobby groups as working with Israel to spy on American citizens using sophisticated data gathering techniques. The documentary is also said to cast light on covert efforts to smear and intimidate Americans seen as too critical of Israel. Israel lobby groups have placed intense pressure on Qatar with funds Al Jazeera to shelve the film, fueling speculation It may never be aired. Seema Valken Gill, who holds the rank of Brigadier General in Israeli's military, is now the top civil servant at Israeli's Minister of Strategic Affairs. 
The ministry is in charge of running a Cobra campaign of sabotage against BDS, the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement in support of Palestinian human rights. Vacuum Gill's ministerial boss is Gilhan Erdman, a close ally of Israeli Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Soon after she was appointed to lead the ministry at the, stay, at the start of 2016, Vak Gill promised to create a community of fighters who would flood the internet with Israeli propaganda that would be publicly distanced from the government, as well as getting funding from Sheldon Adelson, the anti-Palestinian billionaire and number one donor to Donald Trump's presidential campaign back in 2016, and the Foundation for Defense of Democracies has close ties to the United Arab Emirates as well. In hacked emails last year, the Emirati ambassador in Washington encouraged the foundation to push for moving a U.S. military base from Qatar to his own country. The film will also reportedly show undercover footage of a junior Israeli lobbyist boasting of how close Israel's ties are to the United Arab Emirates and other Gulf regimes. And that is just a small example of how powerful the Israeli lobby and their lobbyists and their intelligence are, which are inter, inter intradically entwined, intrin intrinsically entwined, forgive me for being tongue-tied, intrinsically entwined with every facet of our federal government, as well as certain intelligence agencies, which leads me back to my previous question. Where does our priority lay? Does it lay with the American people? Or does it lay with the highest bidder? Which are the Israeli Zionist government and the Wahhabi-led Saudi kingdom? 